Hi all, Dave Walker, your Connect Guru, back again with another comparison video. A long time ago, I did a video comparing Adobe Connect with GoToMeeting and another comparing it with GoToWebinar. I thought it was time to revisit the comparison and see what's changed in the intervening years. The biggest change in GoToMeeting from the last time I used it is that now it allows us to use webcam video. So let's see how that works. So I'm logged into three different instances of the GoToMeeting environment, all on my desk. In the first one, I'm David Walker, the organizer and presenter. I'll start my webcam. On the second computer, I'm Sue Jones, just a participant. But interestingly enough, I can also start that webcam. By default, anyone can share their webcam video, though in the options menu, the organizer can disable webcams for all attendees. Now, if I do that, the only way I can get Sue to share her webcam without giving the same capability to all other participants is to make her a presenter or organizer. I can have only one presenter, so if I had 25 attendees and I wanted to specify three people, just three people to share their webcam, the only way to accomplish that is to make the other participants organizers, giving them a lot more power than I really want them to have. In Connect, the host has the power to decide who gets to share their webcam by allowing everyone to do so or by selecting them individually and giving them rights to the webcam. The third instance of the meeting is open on my Android tablet as Jim Rye. But I can't see any of the webcam videos on my tablet app, nor can I use my camera on the tablet to broadcast my video. By the way, like WebEx, GoToMeeting allows only six webcam video streams. Adobe Connect lets you have as many as you think your bandwidth can handle. I notice that I can make Jim an organizer, even on the tablet, but I don't see any way to take that role away from Jim after I give it to him, so it's not a temporary setting. Once you make someone an organizer in your meeting, they keep that role until the meeting ends. I can't make Jim a presenter, and that makes sense, because you can't share the screen from a mobile device, and screen sharing is the primary function of a presenter in GoToMeeting. That's right. In GoToMeeting, you don't upload any documents into the meeting environment. You always share your screen. So let's say I want to share a PowerPoint presentation and a PDF and a video all at the same time. The only way I can accomplish that is to share my entire screen. How much bandwidth does that require? Let's see. I'll bring up my NetLimiter application and we'll be able to see how much bandwidth we're using. NetLimiter is actually on my second monitor, so it's not being shared by GoToMeeting. I'm just overlaying that recording here so we can see the results. In this case, we need to look at the upload speed because GoToMeeting is sharing the screen and actually uploading data. I'll play the video. And we've got an upload speed that peaks out at about 2.4 megabits per second when the video is playing. Now, let's try the same thing with Adobe Connect. Here's our Connect meeting room with a PowerPoint, a PDF, and the very same video. This time, we need to watch the download speed because the video has already been uploaded to the Connect server. So when I play it, it's going to stream down to me and all other attendees. I'll play the video and watch the bit rate in NetLimiter. So it looks like Connect topped out at about 0.94 megabits per second. So GoToMeeting used about two and a half times the bandwidth that Connect used for the same functionality. The reason bandwidth is such a concern is because unless you have the same group of attendees for every meeting, or all attendees are working in a controlled environment, you never know what kind of internet connection speed your participants are going to have. What if someone is attending from a hotel room or from another country? If your web conferencing solution uses less bandwidth, those users will have a better experience. What else can you say about the features of GoToMeeting? Well, there's still no polling capability. There's no Q&A functionality. I didn't see any kind of web link technology that would let me have live links for my attendees to click. No file download capability. No way to pre-configure content and layouts. I saw no way for attendees to set their status, agree, disagree, etc. And there are no breakout rooms. 
So all of these things are standard features in every Adobe Connect meeting room. And I say this every time I compare Adobe Connect with other solutions, but the fact that you can reuse your Adobe Connect meeting room and that it maintains its state between sessions is invaluable. I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time I have a meeting. My slides, PDFs, videos, polls, and everything else I set up in the meeting room is still there the next time I want to have a meeting. And you can create and configure as many of these meeting rooms as you like on your Connect account. It's pretty clear to me that Adobe Connect is a much more versatile solution than GoToMeeting. But what about GoToWebinar? I'll tackle that question in my next episode, so don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can contact me using the info on the screen. 